who have emerged not only in the music world, but in the whole society. It is beautiful, it is wonderful, it is powerful. It is mighty. It has lots to offer for us. It is profound inspiration. Where exactly do we put hardcore music on the musical spectrum? To me, it is very similar to two other types of music, heavy metal and punk. In essence, hardcore music, to me, is a hybrid of both heavy metal and punk. Hardcore music essentially integrates the best aspects of both metal and punk. Hardcore music thus becomes something bigger and better than what punk heavy metal is. Specifically, hardcore music integrates the fierceness of metal with the spirit of punk. It integrates the tempo and pace of metal with the youthful energy of punk. It integrates the freedom from rigid melody construction of metal with the stylistic simplicity of punk. In the process, it becomes a very dynamic musical form. Musicians tell us every type of music conveys certain types of emotion. They tell us inherent to music is expression of emotion. For example, blues and country convey sadness. A John Philip Sousa type march may convey celebration. Some gospel songs may convey happiness. Punk tends to convey angst type feeling, while hardcore music tends to convey anger. Some say anger is innately bad. I don't believe this to be the case. I believe anger has its use and its function. I certainly see positive uses of it in my own life. There are certainly times when we need to express our anger. Therefore, hardcore music has a good niche. I'm not the type who feels like listening to angry music every day, but there's some days it certainly hits the spot just right. For example, once my landlord was being unreasonable. There was a new manager that moved in. I had my rent paid up. But he said, the computer said, I didn't. I wasn't too happy about this since I usually don't have lots of money around. I tried to bargain with him. I tried to negotiate, but it didn't work. I went back into my room very angry. What I did is put on an extinction CD. Extinction is a very angry, hardcore It helped a lot. It helped me get that anger out of me. I know a woman who's a bit older who says she finds hardcore music to be very relaxing. Lots of times when people think of relaxing music, they think some soft classical music or some very light music. But she has a point that it can be relaxing because what it does is it allows her to purge these negative feelings, allows her to channel some of these feelings which are eating up inside. It's very cathartic to listen to hardcore music. Thus, it serves a very useful purpose. One of the most profound virtues of hardcore music is its realness, its desire to be genuine and authentic. Hardcore music bands want to do the art for its own sake. They don't want to be fake or phony. They don't want to put on airs. They don't want to have false pretenses. They don't want to have fabrications. In hardcore music, generally what you see is what you get. They're not distracting diversions which get your mind off of what's important. 
hardcore bands tend to be down to earth. They realize the fans are very important. They realize the fans butter their bread. They don't think of themselves as demigods to be worshipped by the fans as maybe some of these great metal bands do, but instead they view themselves as part of the scene. They realize the fans give life to the scene, thus they can get too arrogant in the head. These values are often reflected in the songs of hardcore music. For example, a band called Shutdown has a song which says, Don't forget your past, don't forget your roots, don't sell out. Hardcore music is not a very accessible music. It's not the type of music you hear on MTV. It doesn't have an immediately catching melody. Thus, hardcore music is in a good position to stay with. They realize doing what they're doing, you have to do for love of it because it's not something that has mass appeal. It's not something that everyone out there is going to immediately catch on to. I believe hardcore music is an acquired taste. You have to listen to it before you start to like it. You may not like it right away, but if you start to listen to it, it grows on you. That's why it's important to give it a chance. When you give it a chance, you will see how real it is, how great values it is, how they're doing it for love of it, instead of just money, as many others do. In hardcore music, there's a form of dancing which is often done at hardcore shows. This is also done at metal shows. This is the form of dancing known as mosh. But there's a key difference in how it's done in the hardcore scene and how it's done in the metal scene. Typically, in the hardcore scene, moshing tends to be more civil, controlled, and respectful. You don't see this in the metal scene. The metal scene, it tends to be chaotic, disrespectful, uncivil. I believe this reflects the nature of the hardcore scene. In hardcore music, you see everyone many times. Thus, you don't want to break someone's bones by being overly aggressive in the mosh pit when you're going to see that person two weeks from now at another show. Also, people do moshing for better reasons in hardcore. People do moshing to get in the spirit of the music. They do it to become a part of what is going on. In metal, it's often just stimulation. It's the beat that drives it. In hardcore, it's often done for togetherness, purposes. Another great virtue of hardcore music is how cheap their shows tend to be. It's not unheard of to find a hardcore show for single-digit entrance fees. Sometimes, you can even go to a hardcore show with top bands for six or eight dollars. Imagine doing this for a metal show. I doubt if any time in this universe or any other universe, you are going to be able to pay eight dollars to go to a show with Ozzy Osbourne, Metallica, and White Zombie. That's not going to happen anytime soon. You'll probably be paying 40 or 50 dollars for all those bands. Sometimes for even one of those bands. When you can see a great hardcore show for probably no more than a movie ticket, the scene is doing something right. The show is even better than a movie ticket because it's live. They're able to provide these low ticket prices for a number of good reasons. One of those, they're not middle people involved. When was the last time you heard Ticketmaster selling hardcore tickets? Probably didn't ever. Thus, they don't need to charge more fees to accommodate Ticketmaster. Also, there's not all of these 
theatrical devices which they can be at metal shows. Jeff, fireworks, makeup, costs a lot. Hardcore music is very simple and down to earth. There's not many unnecessary frills. That can keep costs down. Also, hardcore bands generally don't stay at four-star hotels. Metallica probably does this. Sometimes hardcore bands even will sleep in a fan's house. This demonstrates how well the scene works together. Do you think Metallica would ever sleep at one of their fans' houses? I don't think so. Sometimes they even sleep on the floor. On the floor. Judas Priest probably will never sleep on anyone's floor. They will have their nice water bed to sleep on. Also, the hardcore bands realize something very important. They realize young people are the heart of their fan base. Therefore, they cannot alienate the young. The young often don't have much money. Therefore, they don't want to charge outrageous ticket fees which youth cannot afford. They realize where their bread is buttered. When shows are cheap, when shows are probably more real than any of these other rock shows, you are getting some of the best bargains for your dollar. Even someone like me who often struggles making it, I could even afford a hardcore show. I knew a person who was in a hardcore band. He made a very astute observation about the hardcore scene. He said the hardcore scene has this great sense of togetherness, belonging. He said it's beautiful how people feel they are as one. You don't see this in the metal scene. You don't see the same camaraderie. In the hardcore scene, it's closer knit. Therefore, these bonds can be formed. Some of these themes are expressed in hardcore lyrics themselves. There's lots of hardcore pride type songs out there. There's an excellent song by a band called Warzone, which is called Brother and Sisterhood. It says, we're one family. Certainly the family is a great image of togetherness, of belonging. The title of the song is especially significant because the title is saying the brothers and the sisters play an important role. This is not a male-only country club. This is something we all come together. This is something that should not discriminate. We should realize that women are an important part of the scene. Oftentimes, music subcultures can be sexist. Therefore, the more women are welcomed, the better. That Extinction CD that I was talking about earlier, I got it in an interesting way, which reflects the nature of hardcore fans. A friend of mine was going to this hardcore show. I wanted to go, but it just didn't work out. He was so nice to buy a brand new CD for me. He brought it for me back. Very, very nice gesture. Help me get exposed to some more hardcore bands. Lots of hardcore songs talk about clubs they played in. They realize where they grew up in is important. That song earlier I mentioned it said, Don't Forget the Roots. Hardcore bands don't forget their roots. A club they played in day after day after day, they realize that made them who they are. They're not going to forget about it. Some of these big rock bands couldn't care less about some club they played in 30 years ago when they were just trying to make it. The hardcore band, even, even the top bands, will probably still play in the club they originated. 
They love the club scene, the very intimate clubs. It may be more profitable to play to these big concert halls, but they like the virtues, the togetherness, the bonding that occurs in these club scenes. There's one contribution the hardcore scene has given us, which, if that was all it contributed to us, would be not alone to redeem it. This was the straight edge movement. The straight edge movement is simply a lifestyle based in hardcore music, affirming the values of living a life of no drugs, and having sex, only committed relationships. Hardcore music gave birth to the straight edge scene. No other musical subculture did it. It didn't happen in rock, it didn't happen in country. It didn't happen in blues, it didn't happen in classical, it didn't even happen in punk. Furthermore, today still there's only one type of music which has straight edge scene, hardcore music. None of these other types of music have integrated straight edge into their scenes. I believe that is their folly and that is the wisdom of hardcore music. Hardcore music through Straight Edge has created something unique, something fabulous. The Straight Edge movement is very rare as youth subcultures go because it is a youth subculture that actually condemns the use of drugs. Most youth subcultures we're aware of promote the use of drugs. Everything that is in the hardcore scene is in the Straight Edge scene. The values in the hardcore scene are amplified and concentrated in the straight edge scene. There's the close knit nature. There's the values of being real. There's the ethics. There's the togetherness. There's doing the music for the music's sake in the straight edge scene. I love straight edge, therefore we must realize we owe a great debt to hardcore music for giving us the straight edge scene. One of the best moves not only in contemporary times, not only in the music world, but in society as a whole, in for all times as far as I'm concerned. What are some popular hardcore bands? There's a couple of hardcore bands that I am particularly fond of. One band they like is DOA. They're from a label called Alternative Tentacles, which is based in the West Coast. DOA themselves come from Canada, specifically Vancouver, British Columbia. They're the type of band that before I even listened to their music, I knew I was going to like them. They just seem so neat. They have lots of political songs. They sing about the drug war, communism, poverty, environmentalism, plus many other issues. They've been around a fair amount of time. They're a band one should definitely check out. I also like a band called Minor Threat. Minor Threat was a very early hardcore band. 1980s was their heyday. They are the ones that gave birth to the straight edge movement. It may have been, it sounded as if this, it was one of those situations where they weren't using birth control because they had no idea what would arise. Lots of interviews with Ian McKay, the writer of Minor Threat, says he had no idea what would result from writing two songs he wrote. He wrote two songs 
which affirmed his drug-free lifestyle. He didn't wa want those songs to cause a movement to arise. He didn't intend them to, but they did. They created a huge seed that arose. There's lots of straight-edge Jews that are growing and growing. Ian McKay is not part of the straight edge scene, but through his songs, he inadvertently gave birth to it. They have lots of good songs, lots of angry songs that express legitimate discontent. They express issues which people going through life will experience, express righteous anger at people who are stupid, petty and wrong. Another hardcore band I like is a band named Warzone. They tend to be more melodic than some of the other hardcore bands. They're on Victory Records. They sing lots of hardcore pride type songs. They also sing some songs with social, maybe political awareness. I like another band named Shutdown. They're also on Victory labels. They're part of what is known as positive hardcore music. Sometimes music can be very negative. We certainly see lots of negative music out there. But positive hardcore says we want to be an inspiration for the fans. We want to be inspiration for the youth. Therefore, we're going to have positive messages. Positive messages. It's also been known as positive youth. One of the premier contemporary hardcore bands is Earth Crisis. I also like their music a lot. They have lots of excellent lyrics. They are very passionate and dedicated to straight edge. They also are dedicated and passionate towards veganism and environmentalism. They're very intense in their ideas. They don't mince words. They tell as is. They love what they stand for. They're not willing to stand for any injustice. Besides some of these bands that I like, there's also bands such as Snapcase, Stripe, Integrity, Ten Yard Fight, Donuts, One Life Crew, plus many, many others. As time goes on, there seems to be more and more hardcore bands developing. The hardcore scene is a very special scene. It's a wonderful scene. It has given us a lot. Only society itself would adopt the values that have made the hardcore scene. Society itself would be far better off. Only society would become a macrocosm for the microcosm of hardcore music. Society would benefit immensely. It would flourish. Hardcore music is a powerful, mighty, beautiful force. I hope it continues to flourish, continues to blossom. I wish this scene lots of success, lots of good fortune, because it's a very beautiful scene. Good evening.